Uh, first we've got the calendar, which I was playing with, and it shows you monthly view. It kind of looks like iCal, but maybe a little less colorful. I can go through the different dates like that. Um, this big button down here seems to take me back home all the time. Might be other ways to do that. Photos, I've, I was able to sync with my laptop, and I can now look at some of the photos. It syncs in a very similar way to the iPod uh, in terms of uh, photo lists, uh, slideshows, and such. Um, there you go with that. Uh, we've got the camera, which does this little thing here, and it shoots there the, the beautiful wood grain <laughs> behind me. I can take a picture. Um, it also was uh, was able to sync with iPhoto very easily, uh, just like this was a regular camera. Then there's the YouTube button, which strangely is next. You'd think that might be separate, but you can go through, see the top rated YouTube things. I'm on a Wi-Fi connection right here at work, so it's very fast. And I can zoom through, you notice there's just a little flick there to go through these. And it will update pretty quick. And if I, say, clicked on one of these here, I can look at some copywritten material that's available at YouTube right now. Takes probably a second. There you go. Um, I got stocks next and a nice little stock widget that looks like it's powered by Yahoo and I can click on the stock I want to see the chart for and I can also adjust the information uh, that I see and I guess add stocks to it. Um, I've also got Maps. Maps is pretty cool actually. So it's a little Google Maps application. Um, allows me to easily move it around and then I could pinch it tighter like that. A little more expansive. I can do the satellite view and I could also uh, do a list. I can do a start and end for directions and uh, click that button there and it should be able to walk me through the directions. I haven't tried that out yet but uh, it's pretty good, pretty happy with it. It doesn't have the sort of hybrid feature. It doesn't have sidewalk view yet. Um, go back in here and I've got the weather, and I've already set that for my local weather. There we go. Gives me the forecast. That's also powered by Yahoo. There, just updated it, in fact. Nice. Um, clock's got a bunch of cool f features, including a little stopwatch, and a countdown timer, and alarms. Um, set it to world clock, which is the default view. And uh, it's still set for Cupertino. I'm going to have to change that. Calculator is your basic things you can imagine. Um, I haven't seen any extra functionality here, but I assume there might be. Notes seems to be a notepad where you can take notes. And one of the disappointing things I've seen so far is the fact that it's far easier to type in the keyboard in the landscape mode. However, notes, as you can see, does not turn to landscape mode. I like typing on a wider keyboard. Um, it does do a very good predictive uh, typing thing. So I can start like that. And I don't know what it, it tried. You saw it right there. I tried to guess what I was typing. Uh, I have to get used to this. So you can see it's starting to figure out. So I can just hit that and actually. Well, I guess it won't. Going to be interesting to try to figure this thing out. Let's go back to the main screen here. We've got pretty expansive settings for all the different things you do. Uh, there's the airplane mode that was talked about. Uh, you can change the Wi-Fi settings. You can also check your usage, like how many minutes you use and things like that. Change your sound. This is where you would change your ringtone currently. Um, and you've got a bunch of different ringtones to choose from. This is the default. But there's also about 20 or 25 others and no ability yet to add new ones. And you can also make the phone buzz and turn that on and off as well. The main functions are down here at the bottom. You've got phone, which immediately allows you to go ahead and go through your, your book. And I guess you can actually scroll pretty quickly through here, edit something, and done. Um, you can also just go to a keypad, type the keypad, you can check your visual voicemail, which I don't have any. i got to set up my voicemail, actually. And check your favorites, too, which I guess is kind of like a quick call list. Um, your mail, go in and check that. Check your mailboxes. You can set it up for Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, um, or .Mac, or your, any pop email account. I've already tried the Gmail uh, to see if that works. 
Safari is the web browser, and the web browser is pretty cool. You can actually turn it this way. Ugh, if you don't drop it, turn it any way you want, and it'll flip. And you can expand here. It also has a really cool thing where you can have multiple pages going at the same time. So, for instance, I can go to this page here really easily, expand it, and bring it down. I right, finished loading. You can see it takes a second there to lock in sort of the anti-aliasing. I can go back to the multiple page view um, and bring it back over here. And then you go to the bookmarks and you can go through all your different bookmarks. Like that. And then your iPod functionality, last but not least, uh, brings it in and it's uh, got your playlists, got your artist view, uh, song view, videos, and just like an iPod, if you're listening to a podcast, it's a video podcast, but you do it through the audio interface, you don't actually get the video. But you can actually go in here and um, see some video this way. So, there you go. You can watch a, a video. And you can see it's very nice. Very nice screen. Looks beautiful. There you go, and then you got the standard music things. And of course, one of the cool things about an iPhone is you actually have a speaker, as you heard right there, um, on the actual device. So you don't have to put headphones on if you're just showing somebody something really quickly. Uh, so it's a really cool device. I've had a lot of fun with it so far. A couple of frustrations, such as I went to YouTube to try to check one of the comments on one of our videos, and it immediately assumed I wanted the YouTube app, even though I was in Safari. And it wouldn't actually let me go to the YouTube page in Safari because even though I didn't want to see the video, I just wanted to check the app, uh, check the comments there in the little comment application. Uh, so that's kind of annoying. I'll have to see if I can go through that through a proxy or maybe complain loud enough and they can fix that. That certainly isn't the real internet if you can't go to the real YouTube to do things other than watch videos. So uh, that's my quick look and I'll have a full review uh, after the weekend after I get to play with it for a long time. Just check for, for it at MacMost.com.